Every time I immerse myself in creating music, I feel like I'm entering another world, a place where my soul can soar and find freedom. It's an amazing feeling to be able to fly freely in the garden of my own music. But when I have to leave that place and step out of the gate, sometimes I feel like I'm returning to a different world, where everything is no longer as pristine as in the dream. I feel like I'm falling into a deep pit, an exploration that cannot be deciphered. What most followers of Buddhism and Hinduism believe is reincarnation, the return of us. Looking at our children, it's a way to understand that we are repeating something, a loop that only the divine can understand. We're doing it all over again, an endless loop through the past, present and future, which can only be called a mysterious cycle, the continuous utilization of time and space. But truly, it's endless and unknowable where the end point is. From the process of conception to the dust, from childhood to old age, all that we go through shapes who we are. But for George Harrison, that's not the whole story. He believed that we are not just physical bodies, but indeed our ethereal souls existing within the body, a reliance entirely on each individual. Perhaps you haven't realized it yet, but you can cultivate a profound perspective on everything in life. Every experience, every moment, can become a part of your spiritual journey. Because we are not just physical bodies, we are indeed souls concealed within the body. Remember, everyone carries within them a spiritual experience, and that is the most precious thing in life. Sometimes, we may contemplate the soul as the freest and most authentic version of ourselves, but trapped within the confines of physical form. George described that when we are liberated from the constraints of the body, our spirit will ultimately find its way to a new embodiment, a new form, yet still retaining its core essence. It's called reincarnation, a mysterious discovery about how our spirits find their way back. George explained that reincarnation is a direct result of past actions and experiences, a series of actions that have been performed and environments that have been experienced. Through Indian philosophy, I believe that reincarnation is not just a concept, but a latent reality where every action and experience contributes to the continuity of life from birth to death. It's a reaction to actions called karma, a concept similar to accumulating debts and credits in life. It's like a natural law, a record of every action and its consequences. When we depart, we take nothing but our bundles of physical bodies, and life continues with a new physical form, a new opportunity to experience and learn. There's something that creates opportunities for continuity, an endless cycle of life, and scriptures teach us to never stop learning and growing. Imagine a moment when we don't exist, when there is nothing but stillness and void. That's part of profound philosophy, an exploration of the essence of existence that all scriptures teach. They teach that the physical body is temporary and subject to change. Each person, each living being, is born into a different time, place, and situation. But within the soul, we all contain immeasurable beauty and meaning. It's all just a chain of actions, a series of responses to life and death. Everyone is concerned about the destructiveness of death, but even the act of birth is just a way to trigger death automatically. You know, every life comes with an action and reaction, every karma and rebirth. But I think it's time we pause and ask ourselves if we've gone too far. When it comes to why the Beatles did that, it's really hard to pinpoint every detail. People often say that the consensus among the four individuals, based on their experiences and journeys through the past, was crucial. Indeed, everything is relative. I believe it's like when you meet those special people in your life. I believe that many of your friends are actually friends from past lives. And if you hold a grudge against someone, perhaps that grudge will continue from one life to another. There are things you can't forget, like Tchaikovsky's ability to play the piano or the special talent of a child. All of these are called karma, a concept that has formed the basis for many beliefs, especially in George's understanding of Hinduism. According to George's perspective, 
All religions are based on a fundamental truth, a core principle that people can agree upon. Whether you call your deity by any name, whether you consider yourself a Hindu or not, what matters most is that you regard your soul and your religion as sacred. Religion is just a way for humans to perceive and express reverence for the sacred, and that is what's most important. According to the Hindu perspective, all religions have a fundamental truth, a core principle that people can agree upon. I take pride in being a Hindu because in my soul, it's a journey of joy and delight. Unlike the notions of pain and suffering emphasized in some other religions, in Hinduism, we find solace and joy in enjoying life, in revering Krishna, and in cherishing every beautiful moment in life. Every moment is special, and that's not something we should take for granted. While we may know about the past or the future, truly being present, enjoying each moment, is the most important thing. For example, when I played the role of George in an interview, we were all participating in a joyful game. Sometimes, in reality, enjoying life is like playing a game where we can detach from our serious selves and self-awareness. In this way, we become closer to the consciousness of happiness and to what people call Krishna or God. We often say, I did this, I did that. But the reality is, what's important is that we are not just I. There's a part of us, a part that is truly pure, profound, and knowledgeable spirit, which we often conceal by being attached to the energy of the material world around us. If we're not bound by the presence of this material energy, perhaps we wouldn't have the societal distinctions we see today. If we could focus on caring about who we are, rather than what we have, we could bridge the gap between rich and poor. George implied that those with power and wealth need to play a role in addressing these inequalities, but is there enough resources in the world for everyone? That's a question we all ask. The reality is resources could be abundant for everyone, but they're hoarded by the greedy. Some have too much, while elsewhere, others have nothing. And the Minster Fair books are just a part of this issue. They only enable them to move goods from one place to another. It's a problem that requires cooperation from world powers to address. I believe each of us has a responsibility to try our best to contribute to solving this issue. If each of us dedicates a small part, we can minimize or even eliminate hunger, poverty, and disease. The key is for everyone to contribute their share to create a better future for everyone on this planet. This is a situation of concern, but also an opportunity to witness kindness and compassion in people. Healthcare workers are facing difficult challenges, yet they continue to strive to help patients and the community. They are not only hardworking individuals in a tough environment, but also demonstrate kindness and dignity in seeking ways to support others. This clearly reflects their ethical spirit and compassion, serving as a great inspiration for us both in daily life and in our spiritual beliefs. It could be said that George's spirit is encapsulated in a fundamental idea. Love is at the center of everything regardless of how you define it. Love, in all its forms, is the origin and goal of all our actions. Love is not only something we give to each other, but it also starts from within ourselves and then spreads to those around us, whether it is good or bad. What matters is that love can be created and spread widely, and it can be part of a profound understanding of our existence and our interconnectedness. As we conclude our journey through the mysteries of life, let us carry the wisdom we've gathered forward with reverence and wonder. Each insight, each revelation, enriches our understanding and deepens our connection to the universe. Remember to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts as we continue to explore the enigma of existence together.